Episode four, we're gonna talk today about your story. War Room, baby, yeah! It's a place for winners. Everybody thinks that they're English is the major component in their essay. Is it good enough? What really matters is how you write, your approach to writing. What, when did you understand what Tolstoy was about? You didn't. Tolstoy is not about any particular thing. It's about a conversation that you're having for the rest of your life. It's a very big idea. Russians are very comfortable with big ideas. Guess what? The essay is not a big idea. It's not a big philosophical thing. It's very short. It's very to the point. Take Stephen King what the movie version of your life looks like. And the movie version of your life is quite different. How do we get movie? There's a simple technique called thesis, an approach to writing in which you put your main idea right up front. Thesis is a simple formula that contains three points. One, two, three. So the essay gives you a question. What's your favorite food? Don't start by saying, when I was a child, my mom, just say, my favorite food is tacos. My favorite food is hamburgers. Just answer the question. What is your goal? My goal is to become an astronaut. My goal is to become a dentist. My goal is to become the richest man in the world. Okay, yeah, great. And you're thinking, well, don't I have to save that for the end? If you do, you lose. Because no one is going to want to read your introductory essay until the end. They're going to they're gonna quit. Add USP about your profile. What are the key elements you're trying to deliver in your profile? Your skills, something that happened to you that changed you, your values, your opinions, great academic achievement, a funny story. This is what your school is looking for. They're looking for these valuable elements. Hmm, USP, he's got a huge score on the GMAT. USP, oh, he's a great consultant. He's sold millions of dollars worth of stuff. Oh, he's an incredible mathematician, and he teaches at the greatest school. Uh, he lives in the country, and he has the first organic farm in the region. Whatever. It could be anything. It could be wider, a wider range of subject than you think. The hook. It can be an amazing fact. When I was 10 years old, I stole my grandfather's car, and I drove to the Ukraine. An image. A swimmer who was winning the race. Or a narrative how their father quit smoking when he was a child. He watched his father quit smoking, and it made a huge impression on him. And you would say, well, this story is not about me. It's about my father who's quitting smoking, but it's actually about you because you observed it. It made an impression on you, and it will make an impression on us. Why? Because we can see your dad. We can see the picture of your dad, and we can see him throwing the cigarettes down. This is a kind of thing, a cinematic thing, that brings a reader into an essay. So you only got 500 words or less, and you gotta deliver an amazing story, and you can't do it in 500 pages, so you, do, you can't afford an introduction. So start with the real important thing. What is the most important thing? Start with it. Boom, I won the contest. Boom, I make a great cake. Boom, I was in the movies. Boom, I did this, I did that, whatever. It doesn't matter, as long as it brings us into your life where we can see you, we can understand about you from this amazing fact, image, or narrative. We're using something called a modular approach. What is the difference between chronological and modular? Chronological demands sequence. First, second, third. That's all right, it's not bad, but it means I was young, I got a little bit older, got a little bit older, got a little bit older. It's all biographic soup going down the sewer. It's just way too much information. The modular approach allows you to talk about a particular subject, your dog, and your relationship to the dog and how this was important. The first time you were in an airplane, the time you led the team on a project all by yourself and you were blinded by the sun and you had to do it by sense of feel. And you're saying, it didn't happen to me. That, I, I can't use that story. It didn't happen to me. Look carefully into your life, and there is something amazing because everybody has an amazing story, and you know it. If you don't have an amazing story, you haven't looked far enough. The problem is looking for it. It's difficult to look for it because it's never been something that you've needed to show somebody to get something that you want. So, now to do it. Some interesting examples about story. So, I've been working 
with writers, Russian writers, for 15 years. And let me tell you, it's amazing. You guys are just amazing. I've heard some of the greatest stories, and I want to tell you some of these stories so you can get an idea of what works. There's the guy who wrote about his failure as a mountain climber. And you're going to say, why did he write about his failure as a mountain climber? You'd think he'd write about a success. No, he learned everything he needed to know by failing. He was climbing the mountain, and he was hiding the fact that he was sick because he wanted to reach the peak. He wanted to get there. And then he became sick, and he became a burden to his friend. And it was dangerous. And he realized, OMG, I'm doing the wrong thing. And this was his aha moment. And he's on top of the mountain, and there's snow everywhere, and they've got to carry him down in a gurney, and it's his big, it's his big deal. And it was his aha moment, his moment of total embarrassment, which turned out to be a turning point in his leadership. Great story. Another guy, he wrote about building a dacha with his father. His father was a construction guy, and he was a consultant. And so the construction guy and the consultant get together, and they're going to build a, a dacha together, and their father and son, and you can imagine, chaos uh, ensues. <laughs> they can't agree on the nails. They can't agree on the hammer. The father thinks he's smarter than the son. The son thinks he's smarter than the father. And they're, tr they're trying to work this out, and it's, and it's actually uh, a complete analogy of the relationship and how they're going to get along. They're trying to build something. Both sides realize that uh, the other one is pretty smart, that they're related to each other, and that is the source of their genius. And they finish the dacha, and the guy goes to school. Another story I really love about the girl who put out a fire with a $700 coat. A lady coming home from work, she's in the village, and there's a fire, and she's all alone, and she's on the road, and she doesn't know what to do. The fire is going towards the village, She's all by herself. She's in the village, so there's no cell coverage. Her cell phone doesn't work. What to do? No water, no phone. What to do? She's got a coat. So she gets out there in her heels, and she's <laughs> putting out the fire with a $700 coat. Sacrifice. It was something important to her. But the fire was going to the village. That's more important. That shows priorities. What she sees as important. Now you say, oh, it's just a coat. Yeah, but it's a $700 coat, and you're gonna think about it twice, right? And you don't have much time. So it's a tense situation, like in the movies. If you wanna have a great introduction, skip the introduction and go straight to the point. Give us thesis, that's what we want. Once you build your thesis, and you engage your reader, and you show them uh, some of the highlights of your profile with USP, then you can go on in your essay and explain what that means. You can deliver more value as you go down and finish your essay. Come back soon to the War Room, and we're gonna talk about trajectory. Take one.